We are live. All right. Hi, I'm Neil with uh, NewYorkStateMusic.com, and I'm sitting here with Vinny D'Amico. Amico, uh, no D. Vinny Amico. All right, this is going great already. Uh, drummer for Mo. What's uh, up? So tonight at the Hollow Bar and Kitchen in Albany, New York, Vinny is playing drums with Gratefully Yours and his band Floodwood. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about those? Uh, what's going on tonight? Sure. Uh, Floodwood is a... Uh, bluegrass band doing progressive bluegrass that we've been out almost five years now. Uh, recently, over the last six or eight months, had a couple personnel changes, um, and we're back up and running full force. And the band is better than ever. So uh, we played last night at uh, Nectar's in Burlington. It was an awesome show, and we're looking forward to doing the same tonight, uh, playing an opening slot for Gratefully Yours. So uh, we're going to do that, and then Gratefully Yours will do what they do best, play Grateful Dead music. It's, pre it's pretty amazing that this one band could spur everything that's still going to this day, and their leader's been dead for 20 years. You got to talk about the Grateful Dead's influence on you and what you do. Yeah, so I, start, I first saw the Grateful Dead in 1985, before I really got into them, but got into them soon after that. Um, I started playing Grateful Dead music regularly in 1986. Uh, I went to college in Buffalo in 1987. I got into a Dead tribute band called Sign of Garden and did that for about 10 years. Became the one of the, in my opinion, one of the top Dead tributes ever. But uh, you know, played all around and did a great job. But none of us ever thought like we just played the music because we loved it. And we we were true to it, but we also improvised. We kind of almost. You know, it was almost like jazz and that you have the songs and then you improvise over the songs. They were just the, the, the platform for the improvising. Um, and we never thought to take it on the road or that it could be like a, a living, which a lot of people do now. Um, but we just loved the music. Uh, you know, it, it definitely was integral um, part of my music point like it taught me a lot of how to improvise how to play music the songs are great it taught me how to use my ears on stage um you know it i mean it influenced my playing big time so and you know they have a drummer and a percussionist over to the layman they have two drummers you know they had two drummers all along until mickey decided to kind of <laughs> change it up and do what he does now which he's still playing drums he just has a lot of different stuff and to kind of piggyback off that, you know, you, you're notorious around here for sitting in with bands. Uh, cameraman Liam told me uh, about the time that you sat in with Mr. F right after you had dinner at yep. a place called Nanola. You want to yep. tell me about that? Yeah, Nanola's a place that actually Shane, Shane Spillinger owns that. He used to be the <laughs> owner of this place. And then, well, his dad Ralph was, and then they had some issues down here. and they So they moved up to Malta. They opened up a restaurant. I live in Balsa Spa, so I'm right down the road. So I go in there. Actually, in Floodwood now, we play there once or twice a month usually. But I was just in there having dinner with my wife, and Shane's like, yeah, Mr. F's playing tonight. Uh, hang out for a while. And I know the guys in Mr. F. They used to be, uh, uh, what was the name of the band they were in? Uh, uh, Tambercoo. Greg, where are you? Uh, Tambercoo. Tambercoo, thank you. So they were in Tambercoo, and then that changed over to Mr. F. So they all knew me, I knew them, and they said, you want to sit in? And I'm like, sure, if you guys want me to. And then, so we, there's no song, I think we just improvised something, and it was just great. I mean, they're really good players, so it kind of is easy when they're all good players, and they kind of know where they go. Mm -hmm. And I just had good years because I've been doing this for my whole life, so I was able to, you know, follow them and lead them, and we had, you know, some good jams. Mm -hmm. Kind of, now... Actually, I just did that with Wild Adriatic. Like so good. Last week or the week before, again, I, I got a phone call. I'm like, hey, Wild Adriatic is here, and I just got off the road, and I'm like, ah, I'll come down for a little while, and you know, then we ended up playing a bunch of music. It was good. It was a lot of fun. So, um, you guys, I'm talking about Mo here. You guys just got announced for the Jam Cruise 15 lineup, the uh, 15th anniversary, and everything. Collaborations are all over the place on that shift. Tell me, tell me what you're most looking forward to being on the boat. Uh, you ever been on a jam cruise? I have not. It's completely overwhelming. <laughs> There's so much music, so many people, so much partying going on. It's freaking crazy. So it's it's like, I look forward to the whole scene. Of course, I look forward to, to playing. I mean, it's always those big stages. The crowd is really, really super into it, um, and there's collaborations galore. So you know, I like I like watching music as much as I like playing music. So 
I like that, you know, there's a bunch of great bands that'll be on there that I get to watch, you know. And then, you know, we do usually do some collaborations. You know, Mo doesn't even do, I mean, we always have sit-ins. We don't have as many sit-ins as a lot of, a lot of bands do. And, um, but, uh, you know, but we still do them. And with some of the bands that are there, you know, some good players on the boat that we've played with numer on numerous occasions that I'm sure will be sitting in with us. Um, but there's so many other bands there that do collaborations all night long. So we always are seeing cool stuff that you would never see before. So. Uh, are there, like, what kind of music are you listening to right now? Like, name a couple of bands that you've gotten into that are on your phone that are, you know. <laughs> I It's funny. People ask that all the time. I don't really listen to a lot of new music. I do, my, I have a, you know, two daughters. One's almost 19, the other one's 16. So I, in the car, I listen to what they're listening to, which is usually modern rock radio, so... There's actually a there's a couple songs by a band called The Borns that I like. It's not anything that you know you'd think that I'd listen to, and I don't go out and buy the records. But I heard a couple songs that were cool. I still listen to old music. You know, I listen to jazz. I listen to I still listen to a ton of reggae. Um, I listen to jam on it. So you know, there's a lot of great bands that are coming up through that scene now. That's some that have been around for a while. I mean, Let Us Here, so Let Us Here, a killer band. You know, and they're just great to listen to. You know. And the thing is, I, I sort of listen to music to study it more than like, I love this song, but I'm always listening to it as a student. So like when I hear Deitch playing drums, it's like, what can I snag from Deitch, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of the approach I have to listening to music in a lot of ways. So, yeah, so I just still listen to it like, I listen to the music that I've always liked. I haven't stretched out into a lot of different new stuff, but I just I don't know. I, we, I still got to learn the old stuff. Right. I think that that's pretty incredible. Somebody of your status, you know, you're the drummer for Mo, but yet you're still humble enough to listen to other bands, whether they're super popular or it's your first gig, yeah. see what you can take from it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, on that line of thinking, the whole jam band scene has kind of seen a renaissance again recently, and with that comes a bit of mini economy, such as fan prints, fan art, uh, pins, all that stuff. What is your take on all that stuff? You know, in the parking lot of a Mo Show, 10 people are walking around selling $20 pins and hats and shirts and stuff. What, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, for us, we've been doing this for a long time. That's kind of always been a thing. You know, it's just that, you know, it's, it's like anything else. It goes, you know, I actually have a degree in economics from the University of Buffalo. Okay. So you learn macroeconomics 101, everything is cyclical, right? So, and the cycle goes like this, everything goes up, goes down, but doesn't go down as low as it started, then it goes up. And so there's a, a constant upward movement to everything, and then it goes like this along that movement, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just basically what's happening. So we had, you know, 2008, we had, you know, the, the worst economy since the Depression, right? So that was the down. Ever since, it's been kind of moving up, 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 and now we're here. You know, we're getting toward the top. So there's more bands out because there's more money in the economy. Everybody finds that they can start making a, you know, a few bucks. So also the kids in the lot, you know, it goes a lot more than just, you know, just posters and pins. I'm sure the the amount of weed and drugs and all that stuff that's getting sold is probably on the rise as well. But there's more. You know, there's more money in the system, there's more people in the system, so that whole thing, you're seeing that again. And, you know, with the, really, with the with the 50 year anniversary of the Grateful Dead, sort of brought an influx of the mainstream into the scene as a whole, mm -hmm. as well as Fish, you know, continuing to, you know, just kick ass. So, like, it just brings the mainstream into, into our little scene, you know. And so, with all the stuff that's, Spawned from that scene originally, all the jam bands. It's all you know. Again, the whole thing is kind of moving up. I, I think that's kind of the way I look at it. Hey, uh, and I have to do this now since you mentioned it. You, you mentioned Fish. Yeah. You're a fan? Yeah. I, I mean, again, I've been seeing Fish since 1990, 91. So like before most people got into that whole thing, I had done. I'm not a huge Fish fan. I mean, I think they're great players. I don't love going to shows because I'm getting too old to deal with all the craziness that happens around at a fish show. Um, I know all the guys in the band. They're all really good guys. They're great players. Uh, and yeah, I'm a fan. I still listen to them. You know, I have a lot of their studio records on my iPod and I listen to them. That's yeah. phenomenal. So, and I listen to Jam On all the time, so they're always on. So, And again, I listen to something 
to see what they're doing, see what I like about it, study what Fishman's doing, if it's something, hear what Trey's up to. You know, like I do it both to study, make sure, you know, see what they're up to, and to, you know, if it's a song I like, I listen to, you know. Fish's Vermont's band, lately I've heard talk about Mo being New York's band. And I hear uh, some fans of this band called Aqueous. They talk about yeah, how they're a Buffalo band. Right? Yeah, they're Buffalo. And uh, wh how cool is it that you basically represent an entire state in this scene? People, yeah, when cool. they think of jam bands in New York, the first band they think of is Mo. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's you know, it's it's a testament to the fans. I guess it's sort of a testament to us in that. We've been doing it for 20, uh, we're on our 26th year of playing, so there's longevity into it, you know, there's, we've identified with upstate New York big time just because, you know, we're all, we've, we've all proudly worn upstate New York on our sleeves, we've proudly worn that we went to University of Buffalo and we started out there and it, you know, we have this attachment to Buffalo, we have an attachment to Utica, you know, Saranac now has Happy Hour Hero that they brew, uh, you know, the beer. So it's, you know, we, we're attached to this area and we, we're involved with it as well, you know, so, you know, it's not just, oh, we're New York's band, because, you know, we, we've been a part of the community, we, we've we worn our heritage of upstate New York on our sleeves the whole time. And there's, there's, there's an influence of the personality of upstate New York comes out in our music and how aggressive we play our music and, you know, how it, how it sounds. That's, that's an upstate New York sound. It absolutely is. And I, I would say to anybody who's ever been on the fence, go see Mo at Saranac. I've been going every year for the past few years. It's wonderful. Were you there last summer when oh. we tapped the beer? Oh, I People I, I, got freaking hammered. Yeah. Oh, my God. They actually had to take it down the notch, I think. It's yeah. a, brought the alcohol content down a little because it was like, I mean, it tastes so good. People weren't drinking it like it was a 9% beer. Right. It tastes like a 5% beer. Okay. And then all of a sudden, people were like, do you, are you, so you sound cool with that, you know, like people getting high, getting drunk at your shows. Is it, is it cool or is it something you guys just like could take or leave? Well, I mean, I was a concert goer. I saw The Dead over 50 times. I've seen Fish probably 30 times. I've seen Santana. I mean, I've seen a lot of concerts. I grew up near Spat, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I went to UB. I saw, I was, a, I was a music fan, so I went to a lot of concerts. And I used to get drunk and I had concerts. So I get it, you know. I'm older now. You know, when I go to see a concert, do I get ripped and jump around like a maniac? No, I sit in my seat, I have a couple of beers, maybe take a taste of some weed, and I enjoy the show. Not everybody does that, but I get it, you know. Mm. So, you know, do I hate sometimes in the front row when there's a bunch of assholes acting like fools? Yeah, but it's a concert. You can't, you know, it is what it is. Mm. Everybody's there to have fun, and you know, living in a free society, you sort of have to let them. Right? As long as it's within the rules, you know. You know, and for the for the fans that are there and maybe pay a little more attention to what you guys do on stage, I, at least for me, one question I have is: it seems like Rob, he's always playing the same bass, but it seems like Al has five thousand guitars. Is it? Is, is he always switching it up? Is that a conscious thing, or does he just get a new toy? And say, no, it's. I mean, he's always look searching for the sound, and he's a guitar collector. And lately, he works with the custom shops or whoever to try to build the guitar that he wants. So you know, and the thing is, over the last few years, we did the silver anniversary, so everybody had something silver made for them, and played that particular thing. Um, that stays in the rotation. Al has about three or four different tunings that he uses, so it's easier to have three or four different guitars that'll play it, that are tuned to that thing, than play the same guitar all night and have to sit there and mess around. So that's why he plays so many throughout the night. But over the years, yes, he plays a lot of guitars. You'll see Chuck plays one or two, he gets happy with the sound of the guitar, he plays it. Al, you know, jumps around a little more, likes different sounds and different, you know, different situations. I, I guess my, my last musical focus question would be, you guys have this amazing rock and roll sound, you improvise, but you guys don't have a full-time full keyboard to stay in there. Right. You know, uh, was that, like, is that just how it played out, or did you guys say, we don't need a keyboard as well? Uh, you know, I don't think we'd ever, we were four, you know, four guys when I joined the band. Uh, we then hired Jim back as a multi-instrumentalist. Um, Right after that, Kirk Uhas from Albany area was playing with us for a while, and we were on the fence of maybe hiring him. But 
musically, there's not a lot of space. I mean, we all occupy a lot of space. I mean, musically, not. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then, you know, Jim covers a lot of that stuff with the vibes. So again, musically speaking and tonality speaking, there's not not always room for it, you know. And if you, you know, like when we have Nate Wilson sitting on keys or Mark Olson and Mark right. Benvenco, one of those guys, you know, you'll see Jim either play more percussion or lay back and just comp to what they're doing instead of, you know, because there's just not enough musical space mm -hmm. a lot of times. And then for us, we have, you know, those positions stuff. That's, so. that's a great answer. Now, just for the sake of not going too long, I know you got a show to get ready for. Got a few more questions. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to know what's up with uh, Mowdown and all. Actually, I'll just turn it over to you. Is it coming back or what? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is we want to make the best uh, event for our fans and for us, for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. And in order, you know, we just have to make it the best. And we felt over the last couple of years it wasn't the best. It's hard to get up the tournament. There's no place to stay. So we got to find the right venue for it and the right frankly the right people like do we make it just a bowl event no inside projects and friends do we make it you know big festival like everybody else plus by the time you get to labor day there's eight hundred thousand festivals that have happened between you know january and labor day so we're the last you know it's the last festival and people are out of money right you know so we got to try to you know it's got to be in the right place it's got to be at the right time and just got to make it the right event. So we're not, we're not not ever going to do it. We just want to make it right. So we're, you know, we're in the phases of planning and planning and making sure we do the right thing for everybody. But you know, that's awesome. Now, uh, last thing, <laughs> there's a lot of Morons out there watching through Facebook and stuff. What's up, Morons? The, the Facebook groups and all that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna let you take this one home, say whatever you want to say, oh. and. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? on the spot. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How you doing? Uh, uh, I hope to see you all this summer at our various concerts and events. We have a lot of cool stuff planned. We're not going out too, too much. You know, we got every little thing we have is, a, is an event. So, you know, come spend a weekend with us in Maine. Come spend a weekend in Utica with us. Uh, come out to Red Rocks. You know, come have some fun with us. We always like to have fun, and we hope you guys will have fun out there with us. That was awesome. Hey, uh, Vinny, thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. You guys coming? You hanging? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. A lot of good music. Thanks, guys.